Welcome back, Ted here from New England Tech. Um, I'm here in the lab and I've got an older uh, gas carbureted engine where we're trying to replace a fuel pump. The uh, fuel pump, basically the diaphragm inside has failed. Parts aren't available. The pump's no longer available from Carter. So we're gonna replace it with an electric pump. And I wanted to go over some of the little things about that that we're, we're doing here. So this is the pump on a four cylinder similar design that we're going to replace okay it's an old carter pump off of a same thing a three liter and uh, the pump is no longer available for that particular engine so i'll go over in the other room and show you the bracket that we made for it and um, how we're addressing the problems of hooking up the fuel pump the electric one to a mechanical engine okay so this is a carter electric fuel pump uh, that you can order online. So what I did was I decided to make a block off plate, just a piece of 3 16 plate steel. Uh, cut it, ground it, and then we, you know, just welded another piece of, of uh, metal on here and a bracket, a guide bracket for it to mount it. I wanted to push it away from the engine just so you can, you know, get behind here to, uh, I needed some room back here. So it's a step off plate is what I made. And if, so the other thing I wanted to do was show you the problem that I ran into with is actually the electrical connections next. <clears throat> okay, so the Carter pump comes with these two fittings which are basically wire. So the Carter electric fuel pump comes with these electrical connections. And this is really what I would call a very weird substandard design. And what they're supposed to be is they're supposed to slip one to the ends of these connections. And then there is this little metal clip. And that metal clip is somehow magically supposed to be put around these wires. I'll zoom in in a moment and then slip up underneath the housing and it holds the wires up. Now it's upside down. That's not a very, as you can see, a good idea and it falls on the bilge. So yes, you could mount this right side up, right? So you could put the wires on the top. But then that puts the pump up here or you have to drop it down here and I'm trying to be able to get the starter out as well so I've done a little bit of thinking about how we could mount this as well as block off the passageway where the camshaft uh, is the hole where the pump originally connected um, is figuring out how to adapt this and get rid of this idea and come up with a better method. Okay, so here's the bottom of the pump. And you're supposed to take these connections here and put them on here. And then take this little clip and clip it around these wire connections as such. And then somehow you're supposed to get this clip up under the plastic. And it's, it's really short. I didn't see any way to do this and get that clip as you'll see if I just use the wires you can actually slip it up between the plastic and I'll just take this off get this out of the way and this slips up between the plastic and the housing and you push it in like that and that's a great idea unless of course the boat's vibrating and it bounces out and I found um, that these are used in MEFI-1 and uh, marine power engines as well. I'm working on one and uh, the wiring fell off and it burned up the high pressure pump and the guy got stranded all because of that little clip. So here's what I've ended up doing. So as you can see, one side is threaded and the other side is not. Um, I looked and found that a 12, 24 die will just fit on this. It has a centered kind of surface, a rough surface um, to somehow grab that connector, but the connectors really don't work well. So 
I'm really nervous when I first tried this was what happens when I start turning this. Am I gonna turn this electrical connection inside the pump and ruin the pump? So I said, well, let's give it a shot. So 1224, I can just, you know, kind of finagle that on there. And what I ended up doing was taking a 58 socket, okay? And I put the, the die in the socket. And get it centered. It fits in a 58 socket perfectly. Nice. And I just eyeballed this and got it centered and then push up lightly and start turning it and it grabs. So at that point now, what I didn't want to do was, you know, try to put a wrench or anything on there because I was afraid it was going to strip. So I just go a quarter of a turn and back it off a quarter and quarter of a turn and back it off a quarter and a quarter of a turn and back it off a quarter and a quarter of a turn and back it off a quarter. And then when it gets snug, a quarter of a turn and back it off a quarter. After I went through, you know, maybe a turn and a half, I wanted to see and lo and behold, this, I think we're gonna be good, I thought. So I'm gonna just go ahead and do this and show it to you and here we go. And I do this by hand for reasons, so I don't turn the connector, I'm afraid I'm gonna turn the connector. Okay, so here we are. I've bottomed it out. You can feel when it bottoms out. I take it off a few times while I'm doing this. Um, and then once it's bottomed out, I'm just gonna take it off back and forth a couple times to clean up the rest of that last thread. And then bring it back down. That's it. Now what we've got is we have threads almost up to the edge. And you're just gonna put a washer up here to take up the space for your connector. And then you're gonna end up taking a um, you know, wire connector and crimping it on the end with a ring terminal instead of trying to use you know, these, these silly things that just now will actually fit on there because it's knurled and they almost probably would stay on there. So if you wanted to, you could just use this to create knurling and then put these on there and they'll stay on there. But I know what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take these and I'm gonna throw them in the trash and be done with it and actually be able to put a nice, you know, fitting on here with a nut and a washer and just lightly snug it up and uh, have a really good connection now. Hopefully this uh, little video, I'll do a little bit more later on this engine because we have to adapt an oil pressure sending unit to it. We're gonna tee that off the oil pressure gauge sending unit over here and I'll get that video together for you too. And that's gonna come out over here and we're gonna tie that into the electrical circuit, which is also gonna be off the starting circuit. And we'll, uh, I'll, I'll show you how I did that because that's something that uh, Volvo did years ago, which works very well for um, backfitting an electric fuel pump to a mechanical engine. So we'll show you that too in a later video.